That's a bad pun. Money. I'm doing my putting practice indoors since Phoenix has officially decided that it's part of the it's too damn hot to go outside portion of the year. We're gonna be talking about three putts and what I've done in my practice to dramatically reduce my likelihood of three putting. Let's do it, right meow. YouTube channel today. My name is Kenny. Some of you may know me as Kenny Cat. I am an amateur golfer and this channel is dedicated to showing my journey on what it takes to become a better competitive golfer. If this is your first time checking out my channel, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you do have any questions, please leave me a comment below. If you do happen to like this content, the best compliment you can pay me is a thumbs up. I do release videos every single week. And if you're already a subscriber of the channel, hey, Thank you and welcome back. Now, I know putting is not a super exciting thing to talk about because people want to hit bombs and drives, but everybody's got a putt and sometimes you just got to roll the rock. As I get closer to my tournament this Sunday, I basically stopped doing all full swing practice and full swing work. I have done a few practice rounds, but I think there's still a lot of room to be gained on the putting green. I could definitely stand to be a little bit more confident over the ball when I'm putting. Let's take a look at the putting practice that I've been doing pretty much every single day in order to reduce my ability to three putt and hopefully get myself into a better scoring position. All right, let's take a look at my morning practice. I normally get up around 5.15, 5.30 a.m. to head to the course, try to get out there as early as possible so that I have the green pretty much all to myself and try to do a little picture in picture. So don't mind me as I'm looking at the screen here. The first thing I want to do is find a straight putt that's about five feet, give or take four to five feet. And this is mainly just to get warmed up. I figure you get warmed up to hit balls, so I think it's important to get warmed up to putt. Hit a couple on the alignment stick. If I'm rolling it pretty straight and pretty true and they go in, I know I've got myself about a pretty straight putt. And then what I'll do is I'll set my alignment mirror up about five feet out and then put in two tee pegs on the alignment mirror that are about the same width of the putter head. So that way I can start getting used to swinging the putter through a gate. You've probably seen Tiger Woods do this drill many times, just making sure I'm hitting center face contact. And then I'll start my process of hitting a few putts and making sure I stay as stable as possible, making sure that I repeat my process and get into the habit of hitting strokes and not trying to control the ball. I have a tendency to try to steer the putt, which is probably something that I think most golfers do, especially when you're getting closer to the ball. The tendency is to try to steer the putt into the hole which just ends up making everything a lot worse instead of just putting a good stroke on the ball. I'm also checking my eye alignment. So I know where the line looks straight from my eyes. I like my eyes to be just inside the ball. That's what looks straight to me. Your eyes are one of the things that are gonna be completely different. I definitely recommend you taking some time to figure out where your head and where your eye line position should be in order for you to see the putt is straight. Mine is slightly inside the ball. I know that there are a lot of pros that are slightly over the ball. Jordan Speed has that kind of head tilt to the back right of the ball. Just rolling very pure putts at the end here, keeping my head down, trusting my process. And this is one of the things I struggle with the most in putting. Like I'm always fidgeting over the line and fidgeting over the ball. If I can just be more confident that I've picked a good line, pick a good speed and put a good stroke on the ball, some of these putts are just gonna go in. And this is kind of what I wanna focus on uh, before a tournament and definitely get these habits and get this process really ingrained in so that I can stay as committed to it on the course as possible. Okay, before we get into my distance control drill, I think it's important to talk just a little bit about three putt statistics in general. Now, there's a lot of different ideas out here. So I'm just gonna use Arcos's data. They're the company that makes the sensors and the clubs that gives you all of your stats, and I use it myself personally. So if you look at a professional golfer, they are three putting on average about 3% of the time on the PGA Tour. Now, if you compare that to a, you know, one to a five handicap player, they're three putting on average about 9% of the time. So 
these numbers aren't really that big of a difference. I mean, like, if you're looking at like 9% versus 3% over the course of a round, it's not that big. But when you start to look at like a 15 handicap or even like an 11 handicap, which are a pretty good player, they're three putting almost 15 to 20% of the time. If that's one in five putts or one in five times being on the green is gonna be a three putt. You would think that that comes from their inability to make six, seven, and eight foot putts, but that really isn't what causes most people to three putt. If we look at the graph of three putts between 20 and 25 feet, PGA Tour average is 2% and a one to five handicap is almost 10%. So immediately right there, there's an eight to 9% difference just in 20 to 25 feet. And then the numbers obviously jump there as you go up a handicap to be expected. But what really makes it interesting is PGA pros from 25 or more feet on average are 9%. But then it is much bigger jump, almost a 10% increase for what I would basically consider to be someone that's at scratch level. And then the numbers just jump dramatically from there uh, as handicap goes up. It feels, when you make a three putt, what it feels like is the, 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 the second putt is the issue. But often that isn't the case. What is the case for the reason why a majority of average golfers three putt, myself included, is because the pace control from the putt that was 20, 25, or 30 feet was very poor. I consider myself to be a pretty decent putter and my make rate from inside of four feet is about 90%. But what's most interesting is the second that ball goes past four feet and inside of five feet, my make rate goes down to 65%. When you're beating yourself up on the fact that you three putt it, it's not usually the five foot putt that's the issue. It's the fact that you couldn't lag it within four feet of the hole. What I need to be making sure that I do is that I get that ball inside of four feet from any reasonable distance on the green. Basically, you find a flat part of the green or you can make a challenge and find an uneven part of the green if you really want to. And you set down tee pegs one foot apart from each other. So you set your first tee peg down, then your second tee peg a foot apart, then your third tee peg a foot apart, then your next tee peg a foot apart. That should give you a total of three feet of distance. Now, you can go a little bit further and add a fifth peg so you can have a total of four feet, but for what I practice, I normally just work on with inside of three feet. And the goal of this drill is to make sure that your distance control is pretty much on point. So, pace out five feet, like I did here in the video. And the first part of the drill is, I normally choose about four balls, because once you get any more than four balls, it just gets too crowded. And your goal is to try to get all four balls within the first feet of the tee pegs. Now, that sounds a lot easier said than done. Like, oh, just roll a putt from five feet and have it stop within a foot. Today they cut the green, so these things are rolling really quickly. I absolutely love this drill before a tournament or before a round of golf because it really gets me in the mindset of you just have to hit a good stroke to stop the ball within a foot from a five foot putt. And then once I've successfully done that, I'll go ahead and move the tee peg back to six feet and do the same thing again, trying to land it within that one foot area of the first two pegs. And if I don't get all four inside of the zone, I gotta restart. Now, as the day gets on, depending on how fast I get through this drill, I don't do 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Sometimes I'll do 10 feet, then I'll jump to 12 feet, then I'll jump to like 14 feet, then 15 feet. I don't really find that it's necessary to practice 11, 12, 13, 14 feet. Like again, the goal is to control speed within two feet from those distances. If I can do it from 12 and I can do it from 14 and I can do it from 15, I'm fairly confident that I've gotten enough practice on the day for those three drills. Normally once I'm done with 15 feet, I'll just jump straight ahead to 20 feet. I don't really feel there's a lot of value to practice putts from, you know, 17 feet, 16 feet. Like if I've gotten 15 feet down, I'm just gonna jump right ahead to 20. If I really struggle that 15 feet, I may jump it back. But again, it's like, you know your putting, you know your body, you know your skills. Like I just gonna, I'm gonna change what I feel is necessary on the day. So 
once I jump to 20 feet, I'll just do 25 feet. And the goal from 20 feet and 25 feet is to get the putt to stop within the three feet that I have marked out. And I know that sounds pretty easy, but when you start getting to those longer putts, even if they're dead straight, the tendency to hit it much stronger than you need to, or the tendency to leave it much shorter than you need to, is exactly why three putts happen. And then if I have enough time on the day, I'll add another tee peg to give myself four feet of total land area, and then I'll hit putts from uh, 30 feet and 35 feet, but the same process. My whole philosophy is, and I love this drill, if you can get it within one foot inside of 10 feet, and if you can get it within two feet inside of 15 feet, and if you can get it within three feet inside of 25 feet, and you can get it within four feet inside of 35 feet, you are probably going to save yourself a lot of strokes by not three putting. Five or six feet, most people are 50-50 coin flip. If you leave and putt five and six feet short, the chances of you three putting are basically the flip of a coin. I wanna take a quick look at some of the stats. I did implement this practice, I wanna say maybe about 10 or so rounds ago, and I'm of the firm belief, never guess what you can measure. So we are going to take a look at my putting, which has definitely decreased uh, overall current handicap and just almost around scratch, but let's take a look at what makes that up. So I'm gonna go into my putter, um, and as you can see, averaging around 30 putts per round, but the big key number here, 1.9 putts per green in regulation. That's absolutely phenomenal. Staying under two putts to hole out with the green in regulation is exactly a good result from speed control. And then as you can see, my three putts, 4.7% and we're gonna look at what the difference is between those two numbers. And I've got the dates here. So we went from 6.7% down to, what was that, 4.7%. So two percentage point drops in three putt percentages. Some of the two putts shifted to the one putt category. And obviously the putts per green and regulation went down, but the biggest gain is almost two strokes or two putts less on average per round just by having better distance control. But you, down that lens, you let me know. Is three putting a problem for you? Do you practice distance control or are you more of a person that practices some of those short range putts? After watching this, are you gonna possibly reconsider and maybe do some distance control putting? Who knows? Let me know in those comment sections below. I wanna hear from you. That's all I got for you people. And as always, deuces, let's keep it.